Hi guys, today we are looking at virtual functions in C++ and this is a hacker rank challenge specifically about virtual functions in uh, C++. So I've already written the code here in this text editor and I'm just going to go through the instructions and then compare with the code I've written here. Um, now this is a working solution, but um, it doesn't mean that you have to write exactly what I'm writing. Uh, feel free to write your own implementation and submit it on your HackerRank account. I have not um, implemented any of the constraints here, I believe, but um, I recommend that you, you, in your own version of the code, you apply these as exercises. Um, here, I just want to show you guys how you can pass this challenge. All right, so uh, let's look at instruction. First, they want us to create three classes. The names are going to be person. So we have a class called person here. Uh, it has the opening curly brackets and then the closing one here. Don't forget the semicolon. And then we have this class called professor. And we also have uh, this class called students. So that part has been taken care of. Now uh, we need to look into the uh, person class and it needs to have two data members, which are name and age. Now here we have two data members. Uh, the age is always a number, so it's an int. You can't have uh, like 24.5 as your age. So it's an int, and then um, here we have a string for the name. We don't want to use a char array directly, so I've included the string header uh, at the top of my code here so that I can use the string data type. Now, these are under protected because we already know ahead in this program that we're going to create some classes um, that are going to inherit from the person class. So the person class is going to be the base class and we're going to have some derived classes. So we need to make these member variables protected so that we can access them in our derived classes. Um, I talked about that, I believe, in more um, into more details in a previous video. So please feel free to explore my uh, playlists and uh, learn more about that. Anyway, um, if we, we scroll down again, uh, it says here the class professor and student should inherit from the class person. So if I scroll down here, you can see that uh, we have this class professor that is inheriting publicly from the class person. And that is how you, you create a derived class in C++. You have this colon here, then public, and then the name of the base class. And you can also see that applied here for the class student. So um, now if we scroll down again the instructions, it says the class professor needs to have two integer members, publications and current ID, I believe. So they've called this cur underscore ID. I think it means current ID. So if I scroll up here, we're talking about the uh, class professor. So here under private, usually member variables are private. Uh, we have these two ints, member variables, publications and current ID. Um, now it says uh, there will be two member functions. So they need to be called get data and then put data. So I scroll down here and I'm going to talk about this uh, constructor very soon. But for now, let's scroll down to these functions I just mentioned. So here we have a void function called get data. How do we know it needs to be void? Um, the return type It's because if you read here, it says the function get data should get the input from the user. It does not say that it needs to return anything. So if it does not return anything, we can set the return type to void. And this is how you um, you get the input from the user. You have C in, so when this function gets called inside our main program, the user will be prompted to enter the name, the age, and publications. Uh, we don't need to use get line for, um, for that challenge here. So uh, the next uh, function is put data, and it says that function should print the name, age, publications, and current ID of the professor. So we are doing that with C out here. Again, we are not returning anything, so the return type is void. This is the name of the function, put data, and then we have C out, and we see out the name, space the age, space publications, and, and so on. When you are done, we call end line. And the reason why we know that we need to have a space is because if you scroll down here, uh, in fact, put data, I believe, is what is responsible for displaying uh, what you see here. You have the name of a student or a professor, and then you have other details. So back to the instructions above, we should now be done with the um, professor class for now. So I have this uh, destructor, don't forget it. Let's move on to the student class. I will come back again, like I said, to this constructor here. But for now, let's move on to the student class. 
And if I scroll down here, of course, it's inheriting from person. And then it's having its own extra uh, member variables on top of what we can access um, here. So on top of age and name, which it can inherit directly, we are adding more member variables. Um, now, if you read the instruction here, it says um, it's going to have marks. And this is an array of size 6. And it's also going to have a member variable called current ID. So we have this an array. And again, if you remember, I think in one of my previous videos, I mentioned that the first element in an array is, is a pointer. So this is perfectly valid. I can say marks is an int pointer that points to an array right here. And I'm using the new int. So if I scroll down here inside my destructor, I also have this delete statement to delete the array whenever we destroy um, a student's object. So uh, this is the size. Um, max, I'm setting it as a constant int variable, and I'm passing it here. So the size of that array is going to be 6, and then we have a pointer pointing to it. Now, it also has current ID, like they're requesting us to do, and we have this static int ID. I will come back to it very soon, but let's look at uh, this once again. Get data and put data. So if I scroll down here, again, we have void get data, and we are collecting the uh, input from the user. They are asking us to collect the name, the age, and the marks of the students in six subjects. So first we have this, we store the name and the age for the students. And then in order to collect the marks for the students in six subjects, we can have a simple for loop like this. So we are going to run through max. Remember max here is set to six, which is the size of the array. So we loop through the array from the beginning to the end, and then we see in, so we accept input from the user, it's going to be, we expect it to be integers. Of course, you can add some error checking here, but I'm just being straightforward. So we are going to collect some integer from the user and store it inside of our marks array. So the first input is going to be the first mark. The second one is going to be the second mark and so on until we have reached six marks. All right. So um, now let's look into uh, the put data function here. And um, this is the function. Again, it's a void function. And I'm using C out to print the name and the age of the students. This is what they say here. Uh, the function put data should print the name and the age and also the sum of the marks and the current ID of the students. So to print the sum of the marks, we can have, uh, we can have this right here, a, a sum variable. So this is a local variable. It's only accessible within the scope of this function. And uh, what we are doing is uh, we are having a loop to loop through our array, which is now populated with the student's marks. And at every iteration, we are adding the student's mark to our sum. Now, sum was initialized with zero here. So at the first iteration, it's going to be equal to the first mark. At the second iteration, it's going to um, add the second mark to the first one. So by the time we are done with our loop here, sum is going to be equal to the sum of the six marks in the um, in the marks array. And when we are done, then we can display the sum here with the current ID and end line. Notice that here, when we use C out, um, let me see here. Yeah, when we use C out inside of the put data function, we did not use end line because we're expecting all of these to be printed on one line. So the name, the age, the sum, and the current ID needs to be printed on one line. So it's only when we are done with that that we can add end line here. Okay, so now we are done with that. Um, I've already talked about this, uh, this structure here. So um, let's look now at the static variables that I have. If you look here inside the, in the instructions, it says for each object being created um, of the professor or the student class, Sequential IDs should be assigned to them starting from one. So the first um, professor object that we create is going to have an ID of one. And then the second professor is going to have automatically an ID of two. The third one is going to have an ID of three and so on. And the same should apply to students. So anytime we create the students, the ID is going to be increased by one. So that's why it says sequential IDs here. Um, now, if um, you look at my code here, I'm going to scroll yeah, to the professor class. We have this static int ID. So static means that this ID variable is not going to be dependent on the instances we create of the class. 
So that variable is going to be kept in memory and it's going to remain throughout the lifetime of our program. Even if we destroy objects, like we create a professor object and we destroy it, that ID variable is not going to be destroyed. It's going to remain in memory. So it is static. You can read more about that um, online. Um, this video is not specifically about static variables, but I'm just explaining to you how it works. So it can only be declared once. Okay, so uh, we've declared it here. Automatically, by default, it's going to be set to zero. And then anytime we create a professor object, we increase it by one. And then we assign that ID, which by now is one, we assign that to the car ID member variable. So current ID for the first professor object, like I said, is going to be one. And the next time that we create another professor object, this is going to be increased and assigned to that newer instance of the um, of the professor class. So eventually current ID is going to be two and then three and so on. If I scroll down here, you can see that we're doing the same thing for the uh, student class. So we have this static int ID. We increase it at every um, creation. So that's why it's in the constructor. And when we are done increasing it, we are signing to the current ID variable. But uh, in order for this to work, outside of the class, you need to initialize these static variables like this. So you have int, then this. Uh, in this case, we want to uh, set the ID of the, of the professor class to zero and the ID of students to zero at first. And then as our program runs, then we'll increase it uh, in sequential fashion. You can read more about that on Stack Overflow. Once again, I recommend that you, you check it out. But if you are confused about how it works, um, try copying my code and tweaking a few things, you know, to, to get an idea of how they can work. Anyway, um, before I run this program, there is one very important thing that I, I want to highlight. You can see here, if we check the professor class, I have this void get data, this function, and void put data. If I scroll down and I look here inside my student class, once again, I have void get data and then I have void put data. So why is it that we have that? If I scroll all the way up and I look at the person class, which is the base class in this case, we also have get data, but then we've defined, we've added that as a virtual method. This means that inside our derived classes, we can add our own or we can specify our implementation for these derived classes. So if I go here, you can see for the professor class, the ways requesting inputs is not the same thing as uh, for students. For students, it's only name and age, but for uh, the professor, it's the name, age, and publications. And the way it's also displaying the data from professors is different from the way it's uh, displaying uh, data for students because for students then you have the sum of the marks and so on and this works fine in the program because this is set as a virtual method inside of the base class so we can override these methods inside of our derived classes okay so i think i've i've spoken too much now um well you can scroll down on this hacker rank page and see how they they add the inputs to the program and the sort of output that they expect but in a nutshell um I think I've explained everything, so let's run this code now. So we pass the tests. I'm going to now submit this code, make sure that we pass all the test cases. And we do. Yeah, so we've passed this challenge. Uh, this video was a bit long, sorry about that, but um, if you like this video still, please make sure you subscribe, um, give it a thumbs up, leave your comments, and I will catch you next time. Bye.